ఓం శ్రీ లక్ష్మీ నరసింహాయ నమ వాల్మీకి రామాయణ అయోధ్య కాండ చాప్టర్ ట్వెల్వ్ కింగ్ దశరథ ట్రాయిస్ టు డిసువైడ్ కైకీ సమరి దశరథ ఇస్ షాక్డ్ బై ద స్ట్రేంజ్ విషస్ ఆఫ్ కేకీ అండ్ ట్రాయిస్ టు కన్విన్స్ కేకీ ఆఫ్ అర్ విషస్ యాజ్ బీయింగ్ హార్మ్ఫుల్ కేకీ వుడ్ నాట్ హీడ్ టు ద ఎంపరర్స్ వర్డ్స్ చాప్టర్ ట్వెల్వ్ ఇన్ డీటెయిల్ ఆఫ్టర్ హియరింగ్ ద క్రూవల్ వర్డ్స్ ఆఫ్ కేకీ కింగ్ దశరథ గాట్ డిస్టర్బ్డ్ అండ్ సఫర్డ్ గ్రేట్ అగోనీ ఫర్ ఎ వైల్ as it a day dream or confusion of mind or could it be an eclipse of my experiences or a disease of the mind thinking over thus the king could not make out on the spur of the moment what is it, what it was then regaining consciousness he felt tormented by kk's words distress and disgusted as a deer at the sight of a lioness and seated on the bare floor he gave forth a long sign like a highly venomous serpent fixed to a charmed spot through magic spells uttering words what a pity the ang- angry king fell into a soon once more his mind infatuated with grief regaining consciousness after a long time and feeling much distressed and angry the king spoke thus to keki as though consuming her with fire in his eyes o cruel woman of wicked conduct inclined to exterminate this race what wrong has been done to you by rama or by me when rama is treating you in the same way as his mother why are you bent upon harming only him by not knowing you as a female snake with fiery poison you were admitted by me as a princess in my house for my own self destruction when all living beings extol the virtues of rama for what offense shall i forgo my beloved son for what offense shall i forsake my beloved son when the entire world of living beings extols the virtues of rama supreme delight comes to me on seeing my eldest son my very consciousness is lost if i fail to see rama the world can exist without the son a crop without water but life cannot continue in my body without rama o sinful woman enough of it let this resolution be given up i even touch your feet with my head be gracious to me o sinful woman why this most design has been conceived by you if you wish to ascertain my kindly or unkindly feeling towards bharata let it be so but the observation made by you earlier that glorious rama who is senior in the practice of virtue is my eldest son as it were must have been uttered in order to choke me or to get service from him afflicted with grief by hearing rama's proposed installation you are tormenting me too much possessed by an evil spirit in a lonely house you are subject to control of another o queen in this ikshavaku race which is rich in good conduct this very great misfortune has appeared due to which your mind has been perverted o oh, last eyed one earlier you have not done anything unreasonable or repugnant to me that is why i do not believe what has been done by you indeed rama is on par with the great souled bharata to you for many times you were telling me stories illustrating this o oh, young lady o oh, timid lady how do you take delight in banishment for 14 years of that pious minded and illustrious rama how do you take a delight in the sojourn in the most dreadful forest of rama with very delicate body and having his self held in pity o oh, the fair eyed one why do you take delight in banishment of rama who is so pleasing to look at and who is so obedient doing service to you rama always is doing service to you more than bharata does for that reason also in your case i do not see any speciality in bharata in fact who else other than rama the best of men could do much more service to you with respect with correct notion and in obedience no censure or columnly against rama can come from the mouth of many of thousands of women or from numerous dependents maintained by me 
addressing gently all created beings with clear mind rama a tiger among men captivates the people of his kingdom by his kind actions rama the valiant conquers men by virtue the poor through clarity the elders by service the enemies in battle by his bow truthfulness charity austerity sacrifice purity straightforwardness learning service to elders these firmly established in rama o queen how do you wish harm to that rama who is richly endowed with honesty who is equal to god and who is having splendor as of a great sage i do not remember an unkind word spoken by rama who always speaks kindly words to all as such how can i for your sake break unpalatable news to rama the beloved what recourse is there for me other than rama in whom forgiveness ascetism self denial truthfulness pity gratitude and harmlessness towards living being exists okay ki you ought to bestow mercy to me and old and miserable man who reached his end and is choking painfully to you whatever can be attained on earth which has the sea and end all that i can give you let not anger take possession of you okay ki i fold my hands in salutations to you i am even touching your feet be a protector of rama let not unrighteousness lay hold on me in this matter the fierce kaiki again spoke this fierce word to dashrata who was burning with sorrow and was wailing as aforesaid who had fallen unconscious and was tossing about as he was filled with grief and was praying again and again for being speedily born across the sea of grief o valiant king ha- having again boons if you repent again and again how can you proclaim pity on this earth o knower of what is right when many royal saints assemble and converse with you what will be your reply can you say a wrong was done to kk on whose grace i am living now and who protected me earlier o king you having granted boons indeed today now talk in another way creating blemish on other kings when there was a dispute between a hawk and a pigeon who were none other than indra the ruler of gods and the god of fire respectively the ruler of sibis gave away his own flesh to the bird and king alarka by parting with his eyes attained to the highest destiny the ocean having given a promise never crosses its limits therefore be- bearing in mind the previous occurrences do not violate the pledge given by you to me o oh, the evil minded by giving up righteousness and by installing rama in the kingdom you want to enjoy life with kaushalya forever let it be unrighteous or righteous real or hoax there should be no change in whatever is promised by you for me if rama is coronated i shall indeed die before your eyes by drinking abundant poison now itself in front of you if i have to see kaushalya the mother of rama receiving salutations even for day death is indeed better for me <clears throat> o king i swear to you an oath by bharata and by myself that i'll not be pleased with anything else other than sending rama to exile kaike spoke words of such extent and stopped she did not further replied to the wailing hearing kk's boons asking for rama's exile and bharata's sovereignty which are very much unwelcome king dashratha nevertheless was perturbed for a while and did not move his lips towards kk he kept gazing with unwinking eyes towards his beloved queen kk who spoke such disagreeable words the king could not become comfortable on hearing the that utterance which was unkindly to his heart filling with pain and sorrow and was as terrible as a thunderbolt reflecting over kk's resolve and her terrible swearing dashrata heaved a sigh uttering rama and fell like a tree which was cut off then the king become like mental a madman 
who lost his equilibrium like an ailing man getting upset and like a serpent losing its fierceness the king spoke to keki in a distressed tone as follows by whom have you been taught this worthless thing which appears to be worthwhile like a woman whose mind has been perverted by an evil spirit you are not ashamed to speak to me in the beginning i was not knowing your wavery conduct in this way but now i am seeing it in you it is perverted from whom has such fear cropped up in you so as to see bharata to be seated on the throne on the throne and rama to stay in the forest if you want to do favor to your husband to the world at large and to bharata you give up the sinful intention of sending rama to exile o cruel petty minded woman of sinful resolve and wicked deed which grievance or offense are you finding in me or in rama without rama bharata will not in any case take possession of the kingdom of ayodhya as i think him to be stronger in virtue than even rama having uttered the words proceed to the forest how can i behold the pale face of rama resembling an eclipsed moon how can i see that reasonable view of mine which was well made in consultation with friends and decided being foiled like an army destroyed by enemies what the kings who came from many direction will speak about me alas this king dashratha a fool was ruling this kingdom for such a long time when many virtuous and learned elders inquire me about rama what then shall i tell them even if i tell the truth that rama was sent to forest by me hard pressed as i was by kk nobody will believe it and think as untruth what will kaushalya say to me if rama proceed to forest what can i having done an unkind act reply to her o k k whatever kaushalya who was always desirous of showing kindness to me who was blessed with a pet son who speaks kind words and who deserves to be kindly treated was waiting on me like a maid servant like a friend like a wife like a sister and like a mother but for your sake she was never treated kindly by me that which was done good by me for you is hurting me now even as a meal taken with forbidden sauces fills and ailing person with repentance being apprehensive of seeing rama being treated with contempt and is exiled to the forest how will sumitra put faith in me sita alas will hear awfully too unpleasant of me having be fallen to death and of rama seeking refuge in the forest alas like a kinara girl bereft of her partner at the side of himalaya hill sita with her grief will make me lose my life seeing rama dwelling in a great forest and sita lamenting i cannot indeed desire to line o k k deprived of your husband you can as such rule the kingdom along with your son it is indeed impossible for me to survive after rama's exile i considered you a good and virtuous wife as you are proving to be perpetually bad wife as one having drunk wine with poison though possessing an attractive appearance concludes it to be obnoxious you used to speak to me very consolingly with untruthful gentle words like a deer being killed by a hunter after enticing it with melodious sound venerable people gathered in the streets will reproach me who has sold away my son saying that i am as bad as brahmana who drinks wine it is certain alas how was distressing and how painful it is that i have to forbear your words i got this type of trouble as an evil consequence earned in my earned in my previous life like a rope used for hanging up one's neck through ignorance o sinful woman you have been lovingly maintained by me sinful as i am enjoying life with you i could not recognize you as death i touched you like a cobra touched with hand by child in a deserted place this world of living beings is certainly fit to curse me such as i am saying that rama the great soul is deprived of fatherly protection by me the evil minded 
Alas, extremely foolish is King Dashrata, whose mind is lustful for a woman and sent his son to the forest. Emanciated by vows, by study of Vedas and by service to his preceptors, Rama will indeed during the period of enjoyment again undergo a great hardship. My son Rama is incapable of saying a second word to me to go to the forest. He will say, be it so. If Rama does contrary to my command to go to the forest, it will be most welcome to me. But Rama, the darling, would never do so. Rama, who is pure-minded, cannot indeed conjecture my way of thinking. Having been told to go to the forest, he will say, be it so. On Rama reaching the forest, death will take me, who is condemned by all men and unpardonable to the abode of Yama, the god of punishment. Rama, the foremost among men, having left for the forest and I having been dead, what sinful act can you think of the remaining people beloved of me? The queen Kaushalya, after losing me, Rama and sons Lakshmana and Shatrugna will be enabled to endure the vows and will follow me to the abode of Yama. Having thrown Kaushalya, Sumitra, along with three sons and myself into tortures of hell, you will be happy? Being abounded by me and Rama, the Ikshavaku dynasty which was eternal, which was adored with qualities, which could not be disturbed, will now be protected by you by bringing disorder. If it becomes agreeable to Bharata to send Rama to exile, let not Bharata do funeral rites to me when life has departed. Alas, my adversary, O vulgar lady Keiki, becomes satisfied with your desires. When I am dead, consequent on Rama, the foremost of men, having proceeded to the forest, you, a widow, along with your son, will then rule over the kingdom. You are residing in my house with the designation of a princess, all fame, which is unequalled in this world and lasting insult as well as disrespect of men will fall to my share as to a perpetrator of sins. How can my beloved son Rama who was Hitrato travelling as a lot as a lot time again in chariots, elephants and horses will move on foot in a great forest. How will my son, in whose dining time cooks wearing earrings used to prepare excellent food and drinks, trying to finish their work before others actually survive by eating astringent, bitter and pungent wild foods? How, having worn costly robes, will Rama, who is deserving of lasting comforts, be in brown, red clothing on this earth? Whose terrific and thoughtless words are, are these of one demanding Rama's exile to the forest and the other of Bharata's consecration as king? Women, of course, are deceivers. Ever occupied with selfishness, let them be condemned. Here, I am not mentioning of all women, but of Bharata's mother only. O cruel women of evil intent, given to pursuit of your selfish ends, you have a settled disposition to bring grief to me. What a mischief do you expect through me or through Rama, who is always doing benefit to you? On seeing Rama plunged into adversities, fathers leave of their sons and wives too, their husbands, not even the entire world get expirated. I, for one, rejoice by seeing that son Rama, in the form of divine boy, adored with ornaments coming in proximity to me, by seeing him again and again, I get rejuvenated. Active life may not be possible even without son or even Indra, the welder of thunderbolt, not pouring rain. But my opinion is that not even one will survive by seeing Rama departing from here, a lost in my house, as one who one would owns one's own mortal enemy. You who seek my destruction and are unfriendly, alas, due to ignorance, a highly venomous female serpent has been held on my lap so long, and therefore I am undone. Bereft of me. As also Rama and Lakshmana, let Bharata along with you rule over the city and the state. After killing your relatives, bright delight to your, bring delight to your enemies. O cruel natured, one who has stuck a blow in adversity, when you violently utter such words now, 
why the teeth from your mouth have not fallen down, breaking into, a, into thousands of pieces, Rama does not speak a word which is even a little malevolent or unkind. He does not know how to utter harsh words. How indeed are you recounting the faults of Rama, who talks beautifully and who is always admired for his virtues? O Keki, the black guard of Keka dynasty, you may faint away or flare up or perish or enter the earth split up into thousands of cracks. I will not act on your word which is very cruel and inicamal to me. I do not wish to survive of I do not wish the survival of you who are destructive like a razor, always speaking falsely pleasing words or of evil nature, disastrous to the family, intended upon burning my heart along with vitals and repellent to my mind. There is no life to me without my son. How can there be happiness moreover? From whom else can there be joy while I survive, O queen? You ought not to do an unfriendly act to me. I even touch your feet. Be gracious to me. That king who has been gripped in the heart his by his wife, who transgressed all bounds of decorum, he wailing like a forlorn child and not reaching Keke's, both the feet which were spread along, sank down like an ailing man. Thus completes 12th chapter in Ayodhya Kanda of Sri Ramayana. Sri Mula Rama Vijayate. Om Sri Krishna Arpanamastu.